Hey, good morning. Pastor Rob here. Hope everybody's doing good. It's Friday. We've been on the road a little bit. Um, so sorry we didn't do any videos this week. But I do have a lot of videos from our trip. So um, if any of you have uh, ever been to Fort Walton Beach or Destin or Seaside, we went to all those places, stayed down there and had a great time. And I'm going to post some videos to, if you're going down to help make a decision, maybe you, where you would stay. We stayed at the island. It was a nice place. Um, nothing down there is cheap, by the way, <laughs> but it was a really nice place to be on the beach. Had a, met some really nice people, hung out with some military people down there and uh, had a great time. I want to give a shout out, by the way, to Nikki and Lance at Kith and Kin Coffee off of 30A. Uh, they treated us really well and uh, got to hear their story of how they started their coffee business and do their own roasting, by the way. Um, they're, they're doing, they've got some plans in the future. That's between them and God. And, uh, uh, I know they wanted to be in ministry, uh, from what Nikki was telling me. And, uh, we just, you know, came to the thing after a long conversation is that, uh, in order to do ministry, you don't need a pulpit. You can have a coffee shop. And she was telling me some of the stories of how people came into Kith and Kenny coffee and were just, uh, just, they were able to intervene on behalf of Christ and, uh, talk some people off the ledge even. So good job to shout out to Nikki and Lance down there at Kith and Ken coffee. And then we went a little further down the road, and there was, I couldn't not pass this place up. When you go by a place that says Badass Coffee, forgive me, um, you got to stop and check it out. And we went in there, and it had some really great coffee. So both places, Kith and Ken, Badass Coffee, and give a shout out to Chris, who was running it there. He did a great job, treated us fantastically. I guess Badass Coffee has a lot of locations around that area, uh, the Destin area, San Destin, and so on, but... Anyway, if you're down that way, I'm going to post some videos to show you where we stayed. If you're interested in going down there, you can look these two people up. Kith and Ken Coffee, Badass Coffee, Chris, both off 30A down there, uh, headed towards uh, Seaside. So, hope everybody's doing good. Uh, I am drinking some coffee this morning. So, Coffee with Rob. Um, I want to thank everybody for the subscribe lately, man. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so very much for subscribing. It's been a great time. I'm looking forward to doing more videos. I appreciate the kind words and the support. Um, just good times, man. Life's too short to get too serious. So um, let me, let's get started. We're going to be in Mark chapter 10 again today. Uh, we're on verse 35. This is our, I think, 37th lesson in the book of Mark. Um, <clears throat> so let's take a look at this. Really interesting. Um, we know this is the third time Jesus talks to the disciples and says, Hey, I'm going to the cross and they still don't get it. But this is what you do as a leader, as a person trying to win their family to Christ. Be patient. Everybody moves at different speeds and not everybody's going to get it right away. So be patient, be kind, be encouraging, stay the course, so to speak, walk with these people. Some people just take more time to get it. And the disciples are those people. Three times Jesus tries to put within them the capacity to know who he is and what his purpose is. And they're just not there yet. And we're going to find, we're going to see that very evident right here in Mark chapter 10. So Mark chapter 10, verse 35, Jesus has just told them that he's going to the cross, that he's going to be killed. And this is what happens. This is their response. Verse 35, then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. Hey, moms, have you ever heard that? Have you had a child come up to you and say, hey, mom, just say yes. Just say yes, mom. Well, I don't know the answer. I don't know the question. Just say yes. I'll tell you the question in a minute. This is what they're doing. They want to get an answer prior to the question. And that's not going to happen. And so I know all, many of our children have done that. Hey, just say yes, dad. Just say yes. And, and then you get the question later. And I say, you said yes. So anyway, this is what's going on. Well, you, we want you to do for us whatever you ask. <clears throat> and Jesus says, then what do you want me to do for you? And they reply, let us sit at your right and at your left hand in your glory. So they want positions of power in the kingdom of God that is to come. They really don't understand what's going on. It's, again, remember Jesus always said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. His whole life was spent around people that really did not understand what he was doing. They were observers. They were watching and they were learning. So Jesus says to them, um, you don't know what you're asking. And he's correct. And they do not. And so Jesus said, can you drink the cup I drink? 
Or can you be baptized with the baptism? I'm baptized, but three times in one verse, there's baptism. So the cup he's referring to is the cup of wrath. Remember, always remember, the devil did not send Jesus to the cross. The devil does not have that power or ability. The devil tried to prevent Jesus from going to the cross all the way back to the Garden of Eden when he corrupted the human race. And then in Matthew 4 and Luke 4, when he tried to get Jesus to do uh, to worship him and to distract him from going to the cross, and then he tries to get Judas to, to get him as well. Je the devil's at after Jesus all the way through the Bible, trying to get him to not go to the cross. So remember, Jesus went to the cross because of the plans of the Father. He's going to pour out the wrath. The cup represents the wrath of God. So Jesus is going to the cross. All the wrath that was designed or should have fallen upon uh, you and me, rightfully so, by the way. You, you never would want God to be fair because if he was fair <clears throat> excuse me, and gave us what we deserve, we couldn't handle it. And thank God he doesn't. He's just. And so he has a plan. And so Jesus is going to take the wrath and punishment that we deserve and he's going to go to the cross. This is the cup. And that cup is going to be poured out upon him, which is all our sins, all the punishment for our sins upon the body of Christ on the cross. So he says, can you drink? Can you be crucified? Can you take the wrath of God and drink uh, or, or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? No, he's baptized in the Holy Spirit. He's going to be baptized in blood, technically, when he gets on the cross as well. So be very careful there. But <clears throat> can you drink from the cup of wrath? Can you handle it? And uh, they say, we can, again, not knowing anything. You know, there's how many times do we do that? Oh, I can do that. Military guys, if you're, if, if anybody out there is in the military listening to me, how many times in your 50s, like me, have you said, oh, I could go back and do that again. I could go to ranger school again. I could go to, I could go do the missions we used to do. No, you can't. Your mind can, your heart's in it, but your body's broken. Not going to happen. These guys have no idea. So they say we can, but they have no idea. And they answered, uh, and so Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink. In other words, there will be some wrath poured out on you. They're going to be punished. They're going to be brutalized for the gospel. So it won't be the equivalent of the cross, but they will be persecuted for the word of God. Um, actually, there's a verse. Let me see if I can find it. There's a verse on that. I was thinking in Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. So when Jesus says, you will be baptized with my baptism, you will drink from my cup. This is what, look at what happens. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9, it says, I, John, your brother, this is speaking of uh, John the Apostle, uh, I, your brother and companion in suffering and kingdom and patient endurance. So I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus was on the Isle of Patmos because of the word of God. What is he there for? Because he's preaching the gospel. He is being punished. He is uh, receiving some of the wrath that Christ received on the cross because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. And so on the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and, it, and I heard behind me a voice like a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see. I like that. Um, this is what Jesus is referring to. They will endure some wrath. They will drink from the cup of wrath for the gospel for the testimony about Jesus Christ, of which, by the way, if you read the Bible and you want to know about the authenticity of the Bible, they were eyewitnesses. This is what we have, eyewitness accounts of what Jesus did on the earth from the men who were there. And so here, and so you say, well, what about the Word of God? Is it reliable? How do we know? Well, let me give you another verse here, 2 Peter uh, 1, 16. We do not follow cleverly invented stories. When we told you about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We ourselves heard the voice from heaven. We've seen him. We've touched him. We've heard him. We walked with him. We were eyewitnesses. So where did the Bible come from? Eyewitness accounts, firsthand accounts of what's going on. And so if you get on to 2 Peter 1.20, it says, above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For a prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. How do we get the Word of God? Eyewitnesses. Um, empowerment through the Holy Spirit to write what they've seen, heard, 
and what God had put on their hearts. Specifically in the case of Paul, he said he was taught by Jesus Christ. So we have a reliable account, a historical account, and an accurate account of the life of Christ. And so I just, just wanted to point that out. So these guys are, are being tortured and punished for the cause of Christ, for the gospel. And so uh, Jesus says, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized. And the baptism he would, would be could be martyrdom, but certainly they were baptized in Acts chapter 2, like Jesus was at his baptism with the Holy Spirit. They were empowered in Acts chapter 2 by the Holy Spirit to start the church and preach the gospel. So, yeah, will they drink from the cup? Yes, they are going to be punished, tortured, and imprisoned, and martyred for the cause of Christ. Two, are they going to be baptized? Yes, they were baptized, if you want to say, in blood because of their martyrdom. But secondly, and more importantly, they were baptized by the Holy Spirit, just like Jesus was before he began his ministry. So you will drink the cup and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right hand or left is not for me to grant. You guys just don't get it, but that's okay. He's not... He's not mad at them or anything. He knows they don't understand. Uh, these places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. So whoever's going to be at the right hand and left hand of Christ is questionable. Maybe Moses and Elijah, they were at the transfiguration. Maybe Abraham, the head of all the uh, tribes of Israel. Who knows? We don't know. We can, we can speculate. <clears throat> so when the 10 heard about this, they became indignant uh, with James and John. So of course, you're in a group of kids, I don't know, young men, if one of them steps up and says, we want to have favor, you know, now they're feeling like they're left out. And of course, you're going to have this infighting. Isn't that interesting? Even in the presence of Christ, there's infighting. Whoever said the church was to be perfect, not going to be perfect. Don't ever expect it to be perfect. It's full of people. And where there's sheep, there's droppings, there's going to be problems. So be careful. So when the tent heard about this, they became indignant and James and John with James and John. So Jesus called them together. Okay, boys, let me get together. Let's talk, guys. You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. In other words, people like positions of power. Even today, if you look at our politicians, instead of being true servants, they are enriching themselves while they rule over us instead of being servants to the people. And that's what they're still doing then, and they're doing that today. And, and they lord it over them, uh, and their high officials exercise authority over them. They want authority. They want to control the people. Age-old stuff, uh, 2,000 years ago, same Different place, same story. So, but this is not so with you. So we're not going to exercise authority or not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. you got to have a servant's heart if you're going to be a true hero of the faith. Have a servant's heart, looking out for your brother, looking out for your sister, looking out for those who are less fortunate. When Jesus said, when I was in prison, did you visit me? When when, uh, when I was thirsty, did you give me something to drink? Like these people that are suffering after the hurricane, are we sending them money? Are we helping them? Most of you are. A lot of people are. People, America is very generous, by the way. A lot of people have good hearts in America. And one of the things I noticed while we were monitoring the storms and helping the way we could, basically, uh, was people were saying, don't give to organizations, give to the churches, because the churches were on the ground. They were they were literally giving people food on the spot. So your money was being used immediately to help for relief. So anyway, um, you do not know, uh, excuse me, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great, and this is for all of us, if you want to become great in the kingdom of heaven, you must have a servant's heart. And whoever wants, wants to be first must be slave of all. Jesus could be speaking of himself. He is he is a slave to the cross. He is a slave as the Son of God in his, um, uh, in his humanity. He is going to submit always to the will of the Father as a slave to the Father voluntarily. And so he is going to be the slave of all so that he might redeem all. And we should be, likewise, we should be servants of all. Um, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Now, that's interesting. I, I was looking at many there. It's not really a, a, a special word in any way, but isn't it interesting that it's many? What it really is, as I wrote this down, I had a thought. Um, there's there's many, so it's there, there could be the word all or not all. And I thought that was interesting as I was just meditating and looking at that word. 
uh, all have the opportunity to come to Christ because he went to the cross. All, all mankind. But he doesn't say all, he says many. Why is that? I think because not all will respond. All have the opportunity. Every person on the planet has equal opportunity to come to Jesus Christ. However, that's all. But then there's not all. Not all will respond. If we look at Matthew 7, 13 and 14, uh, the way to destruction is very wide. And many will go through there. And then there's the way to Christ, which is narrow. It's only through the cross. It's only through Jesus. It's only through the blood. And, and very few will find it. So he dies for the many. He dies for all. But only the, only, there will only be a few or many, lack of a better term there, that will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I thought that was interesting that he didn't say ransom for all. Because not all will respond to the gospel. Some watching today, they don't like what I do. That's okay. That's their right. Um, but we, I'm going to give everybody, as my Savior taught me, uh, through the Word, is to give everybody the opportunity to know Jesus Christ. And that decision relies within your own heart. So, anyway, I was looking at that, and I think that's where we're at today. Uh, basically, reviewing, um, yes, these men were martyred for the cause of Christ. Uh, I, I think there's only one. I think John was probably the only one that died of old age, if I can remember, just off the top of my head. He went to Patmos. And he was punished for preaching the gospel. Obviously, Paul was in prison for preaching the gospel. Um, some, some of them were crucified. Some of them were, were, were just were martyred, killed, beheaded. So James, the brother of Jesus, was beheaded for Christ. So anyway, that's the thought for today. Um, look, understand the growing capacity in people. When you have new people in your church, you can't expect them to be the same as people that have been there 10 and 20 years. Be patient with everybody that comes to the knowledge of Christ. Give them a chance to grow. Give them a chance to think. Don't just spoon feed them. Don't just shove stuff down their throat. Literally let people look at the gospel, understand, and be open-minded towards the gospel. And you just guide them along. So they have the ability to satisfy questions in their own mind through their own study and through your help. So be patient. Some people grow very quickly, year, two years. Some people it takes a lifetime. So, all right. Well, I hope everybody has a great week, weekend. And thank you so much for everybody that has subscribed to the channel. We're up almost 700 people, over 200,000 views. So thank you guys very much. I'm, I'm happy to do this. Um, we got like a little church online, and I love it. It's fantastic. Look for the videos from Destin, Florida. It's just some nice things to look at. Nothing inspiring or professionally done. It's just like, what's it look like down there uh, when we're up here in cold and 30-degree weather, and they're down there in 90-degree weather right now. So. Um, hope everybody's doing good. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday.